Greetings and salutations, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Glitch Dude Gaming Report, your weekly or returning weekly dose of gaming news, at least for this week. Next week, I'm not sure if I'll have an episode up on Monday because, as you're listening to this right now, I am on vacation, relaxing, and enjoying my time off work. But, anyways, we're here this week. I actually have notes done up this week. We are back to our format of what I've been playing, some news, a possibly very short topic of the week, and, you know, comments, questions, and the recommendation and pick of the week. So, let's dive into this episode with what I've been playing. And I haven't been playing a whole lot. In fact, I've got only three things here on the list. Uh, I finished up Party Hard since the last recording. Love that game. Really, really cool. Could be really difficult at times and frustrating. But overall, really enjoyed my time with it. I might go back eventually and do the bonus levels, but I saw credits. That was good enough for me right now. Uh, the next game that I've been playing, I actually got the Platinum into it, my 53rd Platinum, and as Izzy pointed out on Twitter, yeah, it was an easy one. It's Coffin Dodgers, which was a very, very simplistic, basic racing game, just with old people and Death itself, the Grim Reaper. Well, I guess not Death itself, but the Grim Reaper racing with you, and where uh, there were five or four various stages with like three races in each and the person or persons in last place would get killed and they would be zombies in the next stage so it was kind of neat kind of cool in that regards it's very basic if you're going to pick it up wait for a sale i think i got it for like three bucks on one of the flash sales, so just hold off your money until it goes cheap. And if you want an easy platinum, that'll take, I think it took me like seven hours maybe in total. There's a bit of grinding to it, but it's pretty easy. So for a cheap price, I recommend it. And of course, the last thing I've been playing, which I would talk about last week, which you've seen. In various videos now going up on the channel, the Crash Bandicoot Remaster, the Insane Trilogy, I've been playing through Crash 1. Uh, after I'm done this recording, I'm going to probably stream a little bit more of that game, hoping to finish it up so I can have that done before I'm gone on vacation. And when I get back from vacation, we can start streaming Crash 2, The Return of Cortex, or Cortex Strikes Back. Anyways, that's what I've been playing. So let's dive into the news. I've got four fairly quick stories here. One probably I'll go a little bit in depth with. First off, no link for this one, but various sources reported on it. Nintendo confirmed it. Excuse me. That the Super NES Classic pre-orders will happen in late August. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. It's already been pre-ordered out in Europe and that. Yep, but here over here in North America, no pre-orders yet. Walmart kind of fucked up a little bit and caused pre-orders to go out and then canceled it and made a lot of people cry in the U.S. But hey, at least we got confirmation that pre-orders will be happening. Uh, I've got my fingers crossed that I'll be able to get one. Really hoping. Uh, if I'm not able to pre-order, I might have to go in the day of and try and get one. So I really, really want to do that. Uh, really want to get one of those systems. If I can afford it at the time. Who knows, maybe I'll switch things up before that and have something else to play. But uh, yeah, looking forward to the Super Nintendo Classic. Well, let's dive into the meaty news that came out this week. First off, and uh, 
just a note here, I am recording this on August 2nd. So if any news happens on Thursday or Friday or Saturday or Sunday, I ain't going to cover that because it's in the future right now for me. But anyways, today, Persona Q2 got a name for the 3DS. And so did Persona 3 Dancing Moon Knight and Persona 5 Dancing Star Knight. All three got announced. And the two Persona games, or sorry, the dancing games, are coming out on both PlayStation 4 and the Vita. The Vita lives, ladies and gentlemen. More Vita games. It's a good day to be a Vita owner. Uh, of course, all three of these have been announced for Japan right now. So no confirmation that these will be coming out for the West. But it's really, really cool. And the uh, teaser site for Persona Q2 contains just like the Phantom Thieves logo and their slogan, Take Your Heart. So, very excited. I still haven't played Persona Q Shadow of the Labyrinth yet, but this just gives me more incentive to try and pick that game up in the very near future. So this is really cool, really excited for all three of these. I need to get back to Persona 4 Dancing All Night. I might do that while I'm on vacation. Maybe try and beat that game. So yeah, very, very excited for that. Next up, Stardew Valley multiplayer details have been revealed, and it's coming early 2018. Uh, written by Tom Marks over on IGN, a blog post on the official Stardew Valley site has announced details about its upcoming multiplayer mode, while also revealing that the feature won't be coming until early 2018. The post reveals that multiplayer will be played through players' ability to build up three cabins on their farms for farmhands, which will be controlled by other players. Farm hands can do almost anything the main player can do, the post explains. They can farm, mine, fight, fish, forage, marry NPCs, and take part in festivals. However, certain decisions like when to sleep and when to start or end a festival can only be made by the main player. Players will even be able to marry each other, although the specifics of how that will play out is still being worked out. Player-to-player -player marriage will not use the mermaid pendant, though. Multiplayer won't require players to set up or run a server, allowing you to simply invite friends to your game to your game through Steam or similar methods on console. Multiplayer will instead be uh, multiplayer will instead only be online with no plans for local multiplayer or split screen at this time. Bit unfortunate. The post said that 15,000 lines of code have been rewritten and almost every source file had to be changed in some way to facilitate the multiplayer edition. A beta test will run for Steam users towards the end of the year, followed by the official 1.3 patch for PC, Mac, and Linux early next year. Consoles will receive the 1.3 patch sometime after, starting with the Nintendo Switch, but Chucklefish warns that the size of the update means it will take a while to roll out on every platform. The Switch version of Stardew Valley doesn't have a release date yet, but it's still expected sometime this summer, so within the next month. So this is really cool. As somebody who put 100 hours into Stardew Valley, this is really awesome. It made my top 10 games last year because, man, it sucked a lot of my time. But I loved it. I absolutely did. I'm kind of interested in this update uh, since I've gotten back into streaming I've been considering doing some Stardew Valley via live streams in the near future probably try one of the additional farm types so yeah I'm I'm excited about this update all right finally and this one uh, a little bit of controversy to it we're gonna talk a bit about it because well let's just read the story over on IGN written by Alex Osborne Metroid Samus Returns Fusion Mode, which is a hard mode, is Amiibo exclusive. For Amiibo, unlock extra content in Metroid Samus Returns, and Nintendo has now confirmed that this content can only be accessed by using the NFC figures. 
The new squishy Metroid Amiibo not only lets you reveal the location of nearby Metroid on your map, but when you beat the game it will also unlock a new Fusion difficulty mode, where Samus has her suit from Metroid Fusion. Speaking to Eurogamer, a Nintendo rep confirmed that you'll need the figure to access the bonus mode, saying this unlockable content is only unlocked using Amiibo. In addition to the squishy Metroid Amiibo, a new Samus Aran Amiibo will launch alongside the game September 15th. This figure unlocks extra energy tank as well as a Metroid 2 art gallery when you finish the game. The Zero Suit Samus and Classic Samus Amiibo that are part of the Super Smash Bros. Amiibo line also have special functionality. The former unlocks a bonus energy tank as well as a sound test mode when you beat the game. And the later unlocks a missile tank as well as concept art when you finish the game. For more on developer Mercury Steam's imaginary, yeah, blah, blah, blah. that's just IGN rambling on at the end there. Uh, so yeah, what do I think about this? Now, we like to stay positive here on Glitched Out. <sighs> Though it's hard to do with this because on one hand, this is just extra stuff. Most people wouldn't care anyway, but it's kind of a dick move to put this content behind it, uh, especially, like, I don't even care about the fusion mode difficulty where it's basically hard mode. Okay, whatever. Though, I really like art galleries, that kind of bonus content, and to have that locked behind an amiibo is kind of annoying. What would have made this easier here? Sure, have the stuff locked behind the amiibo, but if you use the amiibo, boom, you get it right away. You can play the fusion difficulty mode as soon as you use the amiibo, or you get the art gallery right away, or the sound test right away. That, to me, that would have been fine, and for those of us unlucky enough to not get the amiibo beat the game okay now you get this mode maybe you have to beat the game twice or something and then you get the mode so that you don't need to get the amiibo locking the content specifically behind it is kind of a bad move though again i can see the argument overall of this it's not a big deal. It's not necessary things to play the game. It's bonus content if you want to get the amiibos and do it that way. Whatever. It's not like you need the amiibo to beat the last part of the game. It's not that bad. The sucky thing is amiibos sell out extremely fast. You have to be there like day one to get them or to pre-order them. Other than that, you're kind of up shit's creek without a paddle, really. So, hmm. yeah, I kind of wish it wasn't locked behind an amiibo. And the worst fear I have with this is what Nintendo's going to do moving forward. Because if they... It's hard to get amiibo here in North America. U.S., Canada, it's extremely hard. Unless you want a fucking Animal Crossing amiibo, those things are numerous everywhere. Or here in town, there's like one Walmart that has 10 Ryu Amiibos for whatever reason. Nobody like Ryu, apparently. Uh, so what the... <sighs> okay, I'm kind of leaving thoughts or words there. But this could be a bad sign if Nintendo like does lock something really cool behind an Amiibo that you can't get otherwise. What I kind of wish they would do is... They had those amiibo cards for Animal Crossing. Why not, you know, release amiibo cards? Easy things to make. Cost efficient compared to normal amiibos. Just do it for every other amiibo. And allow people to have easier access to the content who don't necessarily want to figure but want to unlock the content. Give us, like, all these Metroid amiibos in card form. And the Smash Brother ones. Just make it easier to get for people. That would be kind of cool in my opinion. But uh, yeah, some cool content. Personally really excited about Metroid Samus Returns. Alongside of Danganronpa V3. This is the 
only other game I'm definitely getting within September. So, yeah, really excited. Cannot wait for the game itself. Kind of hoping I can get that squishy Metroid amiibo. But other than that, kind of cool. You know what I mean? All right, so folks, that's going to do it for that. That's our news for this week. As for my topic of the week this week, something very short and very simple. I'm here on vacation right now, but when I get back, my ultimate plan for this channel will be going into effect. What I'm going to be doing. So that's my topic of the week for this week is the plan for the Lord X YouTube channel. The gaming report, of course, will happen, happen every Monday with maybe the scattered glitched out gaming podcast in there as well with uh, Izzy, of course, and possibly with some other people as well. Who knows? I've got a buddy of mine that's been kind of interested in doing a podcast. He really wanted to be a part of the E3 one. That never happened, unfortunately. So, yeah, that I definitely want to get back to doing the report every Monday. Maybe missing a week here or there if nothing really big happens, but getting back to a consistent schedule of doing this show again. Uh, next up, of course, Tuesday Throwdown and Friday Night Fight will be staying the same with commentary returning once I'm back from vacation, probably the week after. Uh, going along with that, I have pre ordered WWE 2K18, so yes, Season 3 will be happening with the brand new game. Uh, I'm not sure exactly if every member of the roster will be returning or if they will be looking the same if they do. Uh, Alexander Arts was awesome enough. He bought the game last year to create new characters. Pretty sure he's not picking it up this year. I don't blame him. I mean, he's not a wrestling fan. He did it for the creation last year. So I'm not holding him to anything. It was amazing for him to help out with Season 2. Really appreciate the guy for that. He's created some amazing logos for me. Yeah, that's something he may help me out with again moving into Season 3. Uh, I gotta ask him that anyway. Or if you're listening, Art, uh, hope I can get some new logos from you for Season 3 when I start doing it. Uh, and, of course, live streaming. I want to get a schedule in place for that. Now, of course, my job, I work odd hours, like my schedule each week changes. I could be working 6 to 2 every day one week. and probably will be working 3 to 11 every day the next week. But that's very unlikely to be happening. And it's usually one night a week, but that one night a week could be on any given night. And, of course, there's the fact that I go see movies on Thursday nights and other stuff like that. So, but I do plan on getting a normal schedule down, and of course, Crash Bandicoot The Insane Trilogy will continue. I plan on completely getting through all three games on stream. So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for that. Alright, comments and questions. We did have a couple of uh, comments on the last episode, which I have closed. I meant to keep that up open. Uh, let's find it here from Aaron B. We got two comments from our main man, Aaron B., massive supporter of the show, posting things on OGS all the time. Great to have you back, buddy. I've just finished with the collection, which I really enjoyed. Platinum the third one, my favorite crash. Mine as well. Very first game I played on PlayStation, actually. Uh, he continues, I got most of the trophies in the second and I'm just going to admit, I fucking gave up on the first one. I never played it as a kid, and I'm glad I didn't, because holy hell is it hard. Yep, been experiencing that, and people have seen my suffering on stream. I really hope they give Spyro the insane treatment next. I would absolutely love that. Yes, man, yes, praise that comment, because I absolutely want to see Spyro getting the same treatment. That would be awesome. Uh, and he also says, oh, and yeah, I was very wrong about E3 on all games. Like I said at the time, the quality was very evenly spread out amongst all the conferences this year. Absolutely agree. Well, EA and Bethesda kind of sucked this year. But other than that, it was a fantastic showing. Once again, I thought very even out, as you said. All right, so that leaves us with the 
God damn it, I'm clicking on various things here on my computer right now and things are popping up. Ah! Um, my recommendation of the week and my pick of the week. My recommendation this week, given the Persona news, I'm going to say Persona 4 Dancing All Night. If you're a massive fan of Persona 4 Golden or the original Persona 4, I do recommend checking out Dancing All Night. The story mode in that, I have not finished it yet, but I know it is quite long as well. And getting back with those characters was a very heartwarming experience. I couldn't stop smiling when I got into the game and just seeing the interactions between the characters again. And it was like seeing good friends for the first time in a while. Uh, and my pick of the week for games coming out this week. There's only one big game coming out this week. I'm very interested in checking it out. I don't know if I'll be picking it up right away, though. And that is Hellblade. Sinsuna's Sacrifice. Sinsuna's Sacrifice, or however you want to pronounce it, Hellblade. game looks really cool. I think there's like a 25 documentary in with the game as well, so that's kind of neat. So definitely wanting to check that out. All right, folks, that's going to do it for me. I'm, I thank you so much for checking out the Glitched Out Gaming Report once again. We are back on a roll. I'm going to head back and continue enjoying my vacation. Wait, let's be honest, I've been enjoying my vacation all the while through this video because, like I said, I recorded this last Wednesday, so ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Anyways, you guys have been awesome. I have been Lord X, and I am glitching out. Thank you.